Okay, back again on the Rich Van Tassel Sports Channel. Today is Monday, September 7th, Labor Day. And today we're going to be going over the AFC South Division. And we're going to start with the you know, three-time defending champions in that division, the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I wonder about the Colts. You know, they beat up on this pretty weak division, which has been very weak and fast. They've made improvements every year in the playoffs, advancing to a success round each year. Last year, making it to the conference finals where they lost to the New England Patriots. So this season, if they're on that same trajectory, you would expect them to be in the Super Bowl. I have them winning this division at 10-6. and six. Obviously, Andrew Luck has been very good since being the number one overall pick in 2012. I do just question his turnovers. He has you know, a tendency to turn the ball over a bit too much. So I think if he cuts that down, then you could really see this team be a serious, and I mean serious, Super Bowl contender. If he continues to turn the ball over, I think they'll be mired in the situation where they're in, where they make the playoffs, win a couple games in the playoffs, but uh, don't advance to the ultimate goal of the Super Bowl. Um, you have T.Y. Hilton is their top weapon, their best wide receiver. He's been good, an explosive guy with a lot of speed. They've also Andrew added Andre Johnson this year, an older receiver, but we know what he's been able to accomplish in the league. We'll see if Andrew Luck can't revitalize his career. He's been playing with some pretty shabby quarterbacks in the past. They've also added Frank Gore. Now, Frank Gore comes into the season at 32 years old. However, he has been very consistent throughout his career, and he's coming off the season last year where he went over 1,000 yards and on four yards per carry. So there's nothing that would indicate that he's going to slow down other than the fact that he is 32 years old, and you tend to wonder about running backs when they hit that age. The offensive line. Uh, Anthony Costanzo at left tackle is their best offensive lineman. And Gaster Churlis, who I believe we went over as uh, being an addition to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it appeared that he is now on the Indianapolis Colts. I couldn't see anything confirming that, that he was traded. Everything looked like outside of ESPN where I got the statistic, or excuse me, the roster from. Uh, I didn't see any news of him being traded to Indianapolis, but they had him on the depth chart. So we talked about him, uh, which was on Tampa Bay, I believe. I, I'm not too sure. I would have to go over that. But if he's now on Indianapolis, he would be a nice addition to their line. And obviously, a detraction from Tampa Bay or whichever team he was on previously. So, again, I was not able to see any news uh, confirming a trade other than seeing he is now on Indianapolis' that chart. So I don't know what to make of that situation exactly. Um, when we move to the defensive side of the ball, Vontae Davis at corner is their best player on the defense. I'd say he's in the tier below the best cornerbacks of the Richard Shermans, the Darrell Rivases, you know, Patrick Peterson's again we've gone over and over and over with. He's a very good he's a very good corner. I just think he's a notch below, but if he ever steps his game up to capacity, he might just well make that top level, that elite level. Um big guy can cover big uh cornerbacks. He's also got good ball skills, so that's one of the biggest things since he's been in the league. He you know, knows how to play the ball as a ball hawk. So we'll see if he can't you know, take the next step and really solidify this defense in the back line. Uh, DeCoyle Jackson, who came over last year from Cleveland, has been a solid pro his entire career at linebacker. And look for him to do so as well this season. I see no reason to suggest he would slip up. Um, their defensive line is Arthur Jones is their best player. So... They do have good players at each level of the defense. However, I'm not convinced that the rest of the defense is where it needs to be. Uh, their offense carries this team. Their defense, you know, kind of just goes along for the ride. Again, they have the better players at positions, but they're weak on the rest of the line or on the rest of the defense. So we'll see if that defense can't step it up, along with Andrew Luck coming down on the turnovers, and uh, Super Bowl could be in the play or could be in the cards for this team this year because we've seen them advance every year in the playoffs. So we'll see how that goes this year. The next team, I like the Houston Texans, and I like them as a wild card team. I have them at 9-7. and seven. Uh, Bill O'Brien in his second year had them 9-7 and seven last year, had them you know, very well coached, and uh, they really improved from the year before. Now, I never thought this team was really that bad. They got the number one pick, obviously, the year before, so they had the worst record in the league. but you know, sometimes we've discussed this. Things just happen in a season and everything goes wrong and some corruption will affect. I think that's what happened to Houston back in 2013. And they weren't completely devoid of talent, and that's why they, you know, had a fairly decent, well, not a fairly decent, they had a winning record last year at 9 and 7. So they're now going with Brian Hoyer at the starting quarterback. Ryan Fitzpatrick had a lot of the starts last year. 
Ryan Hoyer comes over from Cleveland. I would like to see Ryan Mallett start. I don't know why. Well, obviously his character concerns and reason why he can't start, but I figured, you know, ever since they got Bill O'Brien, who was the offensive coordinator in New England when Ryan Mallett was a backup for Tom Brady, I figured he would get to start at some point. He has not. Uh, if Ryan Hoyer struggles, I don't see why Ryan Mallett won't get the opportunity. I think Ryan Hoyer's solid and make enough plays. I don't think he can make enough plays to make them any serious contender once they get to the playoffs, where I believe Ryan Mallett could. But Ryan Mallett needs to play and needs to play NFL games to become consistent. Um, DeAndre Hopkins will be looking to pick up the workload for Andre Johnson since he's deported to Indianapolis. Hopkins is a big guy. He had a very good season last year. Over 12,000 receiving yards. Uh, their offensive line has always been very underrated. Oh, sorry. We do have Arian Foster, who looks like he's back in form after having a 1,200-yard 12, 12 season last year. On almost 5 yards per carry, 4.8. So you got to assume he's back to it. Only 29 years old. will play the entire season at 29. So expect him to have another very good season this year, especially now that he's uh, going to be further removed from the injury. So should he only be better than last year. Now we go to their offensive line, which I've always thought is an underrated group uh, with Dwayne Brown and Derek Newton at the tackles. I think they're above average tackles, and they're going to keep Brian Hoyer upright and allow him to really develop and make plays on DeAndre Hopkins downfield. You know, uh, be able to run the ball as well with Arian Foster, who like to stretch the, the run game as well. Uh, defense. Obviously, it starts with J.J. Watt, the two-time uh, Defensive Player of the Year. He's also coming into this year as the reigning Defensive Player of the Year, and he should be in the running for that again. Uh, what can you say? He can do everything. He can rush the passer, stop the run, you know, cover tight ends. He can just do it all. Gets interceptions and even comes in on offense. So, you know, if he has another season similar to last year, you might even see him be in the consideration for MVP again. People would say out the Defensive Player does it, but. You know, if he's doing everything on defense and coming in and making plays offensively, well, how do you say he can't? So he, uh, he's the bread and butter of this defense. But it's also a very good unit as we move on to the linebackers. You have Whitney Merciless, who's always been very underrated, rushing the passer as the outside linebacker of the 3-4 scheme. Along with Jadavion Clowney, last year's number one pick was injured. All reports are he's healthy throughout camp. If he can stay healthy, I'd love to see what Jadavion Clowney can bring to an NFL field. There's a reason this guy was the number one pick. There's a reason, every, you know, scouts were salivating him even before he could uh, declare himself eligible for the draft. So I'm very interested to see what you're on climbing can do. And Brian Cushing, if he can stay healthy as well, that linebacking core is very good. And if you're devoting all your attention to J.J. Watt and you're rushing Clowney and uh, Merciless off the outside, you can really have problems picking up their blitzes and protecting the quarterback when you play this team. And you move to the defensive side of the ball, Raheem Moore at safety, and Jonathan Joseph. Jonathan Joseph is a little up there in age, but he's always been a top corner. And, and top, I mean, level below, obviously. We already know the names. We're at the top level. But he's definitely in that level below, maybe towards the bottom rung of that. You know, didn't have the best season last year. Got burned a few games. But expect him to really, you know, bounce back because he's always been a pro's pro. You know, been on all pro teams. So they're going to need him. They're going to be able to get pressure, which is going to help the secondary. They're not going to have to cover for very long. But uh, I'd like to see Jonathan Joseph get back in form, and I really think the defense could be uh, spectacular this year. And that's why I have to going to the playoffs, because while Brian Hoyer I don't think is the best quarterback, more of an average quarterback, I think he can make enough plays you know, to guide the, the offense through in the game manager sense uh, that other people like to say. Uh, again, we've gone over what I feel of the game manager. I think Brian Horner is just an average quarterback who's going to make the safe plays. I don't find that to be a game manager, but, but we went over that. I'm referring to Brian Horner in the game manager sense as other people do not agree with it. And we have them going 9-7 and seven and making the playoffs. We move to the third place team, the Tennessee Titans. I see them going 5-11. and 11. I'm not expecting much. They're bringing in Ken Wisenhunt, a guy who has you know, won in Arizona and been a a very good coach before Sean he can coach teams. He's an offensive line guy. He does have talent to work with. Taylor Dewan, uh, first round pick from last year, along with Chance Mormack. So their line, he's got something to work with. They're going to protect the quarterback Marcus Mariota. 
will his game translate to the NFL? We'll have to see. He's got the height. He's got the speed. He's got the arm strength. Again, he ran Chip Kelly's uh, – obviously, Chip Kelly was not the coach anymore at Oregon, but he was running that similar offense. And that offense is, you know, translated to the NFL with the Philadelphia Eagles. I just have question marks if Marcus Mariota can do it. But it wouldn't surprise me if he does. It wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't. And I think it all depends on how he plays early on in you know, this season and obviously early on in his career. Uh, he doesn't have a lot to work with on the wide receiver positions. Uh, he's got Kendall Wright, Harry Douglas. Harry Douglas has had good seasons in the past, but, you know, those were in Atlanta when he had Julio Jones and Robbie White as well with Matt Ryan. So I'm not expecting much from Harry Douglas. Justin Horner, big question mark. Is he ever going to live up to the potential his game will dictate? His size, 6'4", got the speed, big receiver, just has not translated to the NFL. If he can do that, he would be their team's best wide receiver, Marcus Mariota's favorite weapon. But we'll have to see him do it, and it's not been shown that he can this ball in his career. On the defensive side of the ball, they do have a good defensive line with uh, Jarrell Casey and Sammy Hill. It's now Sammy Hill used to be Sammy Lee Hill. Sammy Hill is the defensive tackle, and Jarrell Casey is the defensive end in a 3-4 scheme, so they're more doing run stopping instead of rushing the, court, rushing the passer uh, in the 3-4 scheme of the defensive line. Um, they're linebackers. They're, these are the guys who are going to be doing the pass rushing. Derek Morgan. Solid, you know, solid pro, nothing spectacular. Brian Rackwell coming over from Washington, and this guy is as tough as he gets. He's going to, you know, demand double teams. And with the defensive line of Casey and Hill, he should be getting one-on-ones with tackles, and he could be devastating this year. Had some injuries in the past. Hopefully he's beyond that because I've always liked Brian Rackwell, a very good player. It's going to be a nice addition for this team coming over from the Washington Redskins. And then moving on to their secondary, Jason McCourty, you know, kind of a tweener guy between safety and cornerback. He's going to be moving cornerback this season, and they're going to need him because they're weak uh, at the other side of the ball on cornerback. We also have Michael Griffin, 30 years old, but always been a pro's pro. I don't think his age is going to be an issue just yet. So I expect him to be the professional he's always been and have a very good season in the safety spot. For him. And then our last place team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm interested to see what could happen. Jacksonville. I think there's talent there. I have them going 5-11. and 11. They might do a little better than that. You know, it depends on if they win some games early in the season. But I don't see them making 500 at 8-8. Eight eight. If they made 7-9, and nine, that would be very impressive. 6-10. and 10. Just got to keep making strides with this team. Obviously, as Blake Borders comes in the second year. Denard Robinson at their running back. Uh, Denard Robinson is fast. We saw what he can do in Michigan. He's got speed. I just don't think he's the number one workload back in the NFL. I like Denard Robinson's game as a change of pace guy, you know, someone you can swing out, you know, you know, in the slot and uh, give him quick screens, a la Brian Westbrook back in the day with Philadelphia. Maybe a couple trick plays because he was a quarterback in college. But as an everyday NFL running back, every down, number one guy, I just don't see it. And I think that's really going to hurt him because it's going to force Blake Bortles to throw the ball a lot. Mercedes Lewis is their best weapon at tight end in the passing game. Their uh, receivers are weak, Allen Robinson, Allen Hearn. Their offensive line, they have made improvements. Luke Jokel, uh, who's was a top pick at left tackle, he's going to protect the Bortles line side. That was two years ago, I believe. Uh, they also added Stefan Wisniewski at center, coming over from Oakland. And Jeremy Pornell, who's Doug Free's backup in Dallas last year, got a lot of time on that offensive line. Some people might have even consider Jeremy Parnell better than Doug Free. You know, he's a good player, and he's going to be a nice addition, and he's going to be missed in Dallas. Uh, you know, they might have replaced him in Dallas, but he, he was always a guy you could rely on to come in and play well for Doug Free, who had been injured a lot. So we'll see now that he's finally getting a starting position, which I'm very pleased to see. I always like Parnell, and uh, he's going to be a nice improvement for this team. As we move on to the defensive side of the ball, their top pick, Dante Fowler Jr., He's not going to play this season, suffered a torn ACL. That's going to hurt them a lot. You have Chris Clemens on the defensive line. He's a winner. He's come over from Seattle last, last season. This actually might be his first. I'm not sure. I'd have to double check that. I believe he came over last year. So this is a guy who's won a Super Bowl, good defensive end. So I'm going to need him to get pressure on the quarterback, obviously, as he did in Seattle. Paul Puzzlesny is their best linebacker. Been in the league a while. Consistent guy. Nothing spectacular, but he's consistent. 
makes all the tackles, makes all the plays. And then when you move on to their secondary, you have two additions, Devon House at cornerback coming over from Green Bay. Um, he's an upgrade, but they were pretty weak, so it doesn't take much to be an upgrade. We'll see if Devin House or Devon House can provide some leadership and really shut guys down. I don't see it. I mean, he'll be an improvement. He'll keep him competitive, but as far as overall shutting down a side of the field, not with Devon House. I don't see it there. And Sergio Brown, who played in New England and was in Indianapolis last year at safety, another guy brought in. We're going to look to solidify that secondary on the back end and uh, keep them competitive in the passing game. So let's go over that division for you. We have the Indianapolis Colts at 10-6, and 6, a team that's progressed every year in the playoffs, you know, advancing to the next round. I can see them going to the Super Bowl, which would be the next progression if Andrew Luck could cut down on the turnovers. Frank Gore can continue to defy age. And if Vontae Davis can step into that next level of cornerbacks because they do have good defensive players as well with DePaul Jackson at linebacker and Arthur Jones. The rest of the defensive line is weak, or the defensive unit, excuse me, is weak. So if Vontae Davis can take that next step, though, that may be just enough to get him in the Super Bowl along with Andrew Love limiting his turnovers. They, I have them going 10-6 and six winning the division. The next team is Houston Texans at 9-7. and seven. I do have them being a wild card team. Ryan Hoyer just needs to be consistent in quarterback. I'd like to see Ryan Mallett get a start, and I think that would be better for this team. I still have them as a wild card team regardless. Arian Foster back to form. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins over 12, excuse me, 76 catches for 1,200 yards last year. Going to need to replace Andre Johnson. Uh, with Ryan Hoyer, his numbers might go down. You know, Ryan Fitzpatrick quarterback last year. Does like to throw the ball, can get it downfield, you know, so he can certainly inflate guys' numbers just a bit. Their offensive line underrated with Wayne Brown and Derek Newton at tackle. Defense is where I see this team really being dangerous. You have J.J. Watt, two-time defensive player of the year, reigning defensive player of the year. That very strong linebacking core with Whitney Merciless and Jadavion Clowney, last year's first-round pick, really didn't play at all last year. He's gonna. We're going to see if he can live up to the bill, which I expect he does, along with Ryan Cushing. going to be very dangerous that front seven with those guys. And then in the secondary, Raheem Moore at safety and Jonathan Joseph at cornerback with Jonathan Joseph that bounced back here from last year. And we move on to the Tennessee Titans. Ken Wizenhunt is their coach. Marcus Mariota, the quarterback. We'll see if his game can translate to the NFL. The receivers, Kendall Wright, Harry Douglas, and Justin Hunter. A lot of question marks, especially with Justin Hunter. We're going to see if he can't finally become the player that people would expect him to be. In the NFL, all that talent. Defensive side of the or and they do have a good offensive line with Taylor Luan and Chains Borbeck. Going to help Marcus Mario develop. When you come to the defensive side of the ball, the defensive line in three four set: Jarrell Casey at defensive end and Sammy Hill at defensive tackle. Going to look to clog up guys on the offense to allow Brian Arakpo and Derek Morgan to get pressure uh, on the quarterbacks. And then Jason McCourty, Michael Griffin, Jason McCourty, the cornerback. Been a tweener guy, Michael Griffin at safety. Jason McCourty, I think, will do a decent enough job. Michael Griffin has always been a pro's pro. See if he can't uh, stay away from the injury look this season. Forever. And then last but not least, or at least, you know, <laughs> we have the Jacksonville Jaguars, Blake Bortles in the second year. Denard Robinson, can he be a consistent every down running back in the NFL? Or is he more just a, I don't want to say gimmick, but just the guy who comes in for more of a special package, you know, screens, uh, change of pace, you know, possibly a trick play here and there because of the quarterback. Their offensive line has, you know, Luke Jokel, who's coming into his own. We're going to see if he can't take the next step. They also added Stefan Wisniewski from Oakland and Jeremy Parnell, right tackle from Dallas. Really nice pickup in Jeremy Parnell. The defense, Dante Fowler injury is going to hurt them this year. He was their top pick. Um, Chris Clemens, a winner in the past, they're going to need him to get pressure, especially with Dante Fowler out. Paul Puzlozny, always a consistent linebacker, nothing spectacular, but makes all the plays and a consistent guy. Kind of reminds me of what he's at Thomas. I believe there was those comparisons made when they had the draft was a few years ago, so I wouldn't know the name. And on their secondary, they added Devon House at cornerback from Green Bay, a guy who's going to you know, be professional. Up the defense, but he's not going to lock down the side of the ball. And Sergio Brown at safety, who played in New England and previously, most recently, in the Panthers. 
All right, so that is the AFC South tomorrow, Tuesday, September 8th. We will be moving on to the NFC West division. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you tomorrow.